They say it's better to have it not need it than need it not have it. She had it. <laughs> Imam Muhammad didn't go to public school. He wasn't conditioned. We, everybody in here, was conditioned in the public school system. Those leaders out there that are speaking, they say they are leaders. But you can't lead with fear. You lead as a warrior. A warrior is not afraid of anything when it comes to doing what he's ordained to do. Does he have a little, every, every one of us have a fear. God put a little fear in us. But the man of courage work through his fear and do what he has to do. If you have to fight five or six, well, that's what's going to happen. And you bringing your thing and I'm bringing my thing. You see, we're sitting here watching the Final Four right now in a basketball game. Because, you know, they all got out of uh, sons, all thinking they're going to be an NBA stars. <laughs> Now he's three foot four and he think he's gonna dunk. It's not likely. You see, but they got goals all out in the street and uh, they're watching it on Xbox and all these different boxes in the television. A false dream. A false dream. Everything connected, and I, I'm, I'm kind of moving around, maybe rambling, I hope I get it all together. Every false dream that they give us is round a ball. Baseball, <laughs> golf ball, yeah. basketball, mm -hmm. football. Mm -hmm. It's all around in our little brother's head. Having a ball. Which, which one? Having a ball. Having a ball too. That's for our age and a little bit younger. Having a ball. <laughs> and, and, and you know, we big show off people, you know. Let me go out and show the, uh, my clothes that I have. We the biggest exhibitionists that I ever seen. Always on, on stage. But when it comes to doing something with our education, which the school is nothing but a, uh, I won't say a holding ground, but it's uh, almost uh well, the word escapes me that I was thinking of, but it's a, a prerequisite for prison. Yes. Yes. Don't fool yourself. We got two million African Americans in prison. We got two million in special ed. Special ed is a hustle. Every time, if it's if, 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 if it's nine thousand dollars a year to put a student in the, through the Chicago public system, I don't know what it is, but if it is, every time they put an African American male or anybody else in the special ed, the school get another nine thousand dollars from Arne Duncan and President Obama, Title One. So there's, you're not tracking that money. So instead of getting 9000 you get eighteen. So what's the quickest way to get some money? Put one of our boys in special ed. It's a hustle. Our children are being used and nobody is aware. That's why whenever they call you to school telling you that your son got ADHD or any other uh, 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 problem, he don't sit still, he's running around, there are reasons why he's running around. Maybe because there ain't no daddy at home, I don't know. It could be the fact that he's not challenged. And he wants to move because he's an African American uh, genius in disguise. When you got 91 to 93 percent of Caucasian females teaching in the public education system that knows nothing about your son or daughter. They used to keep uh, the suburban Caucasian female away from the regular class African American male. They had their reasons. Okay, now to for their purpose again, they're bringing them in. Now they can't qualify uh, because they're not highly certified in the suburbs, so they come in and work in our schools in an emergency certification. First thing you should do when they tell you your child. It's got a problem, and you wants to tell the principal, okay, fine. 
I want to know if your teacher is certified. You have some questions for them, not giving your information. Have some questions for them. Are your teachers certified? Okay, they're, they're, they're saying, now here the teacher is making the decision that your child needs special ed. She's out of her lane. She knows how to teach, maybe, but what does she know about special ed? Nothing. First year, maybe, the child uh, in kindergarten had a new teacher out of college, didn't know a front end from the back end. Next year, uh, uh, in the first grade, the teacher was out of school, uh, had uh, more than she, she was in school a lot of times, and they give a substitute, okay? And the next year, he's kicked out because he's having a problem from first kindergarten, first grade, second grade, he starts sitting at home every day. So he's not learning at home, okay? So these are a lot of things that's happening to our boys and girls, and we aren't aware. So I bring it to you to be aware. Don't sign anything if you have any doubt. Now, there are some legitimate uh, special ed uh, uh, conditions. Autism, you cripple, uh, you have, you're blind. Uh, that, you know, you can't hear, uh, but there's no test with any school psychologist or anyone else that can determine what's going on with your brain as far as learning. Now, if you find a test that can determine that, please let me know so I won't ever make that mistake again. As of today, there is no test. They, what they can test them with and say they have it, even if they don't have it, and they give them all type of psychotropic drugs that's out there on Wall Street, pull those drugs off of Wall Street, Wall Street might fall. And they load it up on our children. Why did they do it? They did it because after the 1954 Civil Rights Act, which I talked about a little bit before, so I just rushed through it, because they said you could no longer discriminate on the basis of color. And they were supposed to integrate the schools with all delivery speed. They didn't do it. So then they moved into 1964 at the Rights Act. They still didn't do it. So then what happened, uh, they said, well, you know, we got to do this. So they come up with what they call a compromise. Well, anytime two crooks get together to compromise, it's not going to be good for you. Okay, so the compromise was, if you boys, you know, they was behind closed doors, we was not called in, and uh, they have a lot of meetings like that about us, okay? And they say, if you take them in, you can resegregate them through special education. And you're going to get an extra $9,000 every time you do it. Now, that's a pretty good offer. And that's what they have done. I don't know why we're holding up. Not just Muslims. I'm speaking to Muslims, Christians, anywhere where African Americans reside. We don't have to believe the same thing to take care of our children. They didn't put us, they didn't, on the slave ship, I don't believe, I wasn't there. But I don't believe that they said, you know what? What, what, what is your religion? So you stay, and I'll bring this one. Packed us all in here, worked us all the same for almost 250 years or more, set up Jim Crow laws after that for the next 100 years to hold you back in all areas of activity, all areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. You have to go to the white supremacist on, in all those areas because he controlled it 24-7. The only African-centered person that I know that there was a divine need for was Imam Warf D. Muhammad. Now, we, now, so, some people may not like that because I've heard people say, you worship Imam Muhammad. And I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I, wish his, I don't worship his best example, Prophet Muhammad. I don't worship him. 